So I welcome you into the guide to easy painting and today we are going to paint this picture. This is a picture taken from Edward Siegel. So this tutorial is normally a tutorial that I only show on my Patreon page but as a demonstration I did put the full length on YouTube in French and now I will dub it for you in English so you can um, have a look on how uh, I present uh, those videos on Patreon. So Patreon is not available just now in English but it will be soon and I will let you know when we are ready for it. So for this painting we are going to use uh, the following colors. We're using ultramarine blue. Then we've got burnt umber, red oxide transparent. I sometimes have a burnt sienna on my tablet instead of or uh, as well as but it is important to have a transparent color so the next one is Cronacridum magenta then we've got Indian yellow yellow ochre um, uh, cadmium yellow white and yellow Naples Naples yellow so this is my palette today so what uh, I'm doing here is spreading it out into a line I'm going to do this with each and every color what this does it um, stops me from contaminating the whole uh, color pile so we'll take just from uh, the uh, the front the the beginning of the of the pile and uh, uh, we take some as we go along and uh, this enables us not to um, contaminate the whole pile at once so now we've done this with all the colors we are going to speak about uh, the medium I'm uh, using so in this I'll have a bit of uh, linseed oil and some turpentine. I am not using much of it. Uh, I'm using a mixture of 30% turpentine and 60% um, oil. And that will be my medium today. So what, uh, what I, I do is I have a jar which I mark uh, turpentine and oil well I've, I've got a T here for turpentine and oil so the rest will be oil so one third of the jar will be to, is turpentine and I fill up the rest of the jar with uh, oil linseed oil linseed oil that I make myself and as I said last, last time I have got a video which I will put on there I haven't got many comments of you guys uh, uh, at the moment so um, I'll wait to get uh, a few comments to know if you're interested on having the the recipe of how you make your own linseed oil from cold pressed uh, linseed the brushes we are going to use are flat and um, filberts so a couple of each the lesson for today will be to use bold brush strokes uh, to use transparent colors for the dark uh, parts of the painting so we can make these recede um, and um, Yes, yeah, so mainly we are going to work on our brush strokes. So I'm using here number four for uh, the um, the drawing that we are going to put on this 
uh, canvas now. It's a board, 3.5 millimeter of MDF board that I've primed uh, with some gesso, some tainted gesso. I'm using a bit of that medium and uh, with a mixture of um, my darks, so ultramarine blue and uh, brown oxide, I will do the drawing. So there's many ways to get the drawing on the canvas or on the board here, but I'm choosing today to use a tool who's named Artgrid. I'm showing it here, see Artgrid, and it is from Jackson's. So it is an English uh, made tool and it does what it says on the tin, it's a grid. Help you with art. So how does it work? So first of all you can download it from uh, Jackson's. Uh, I think there is a fee, well in your app store there is a fee to two, two pounds something. So anyway, so it enables you to download some pictures pictures or uh, photos or whatever and uh, then you are uh, putting a grid over it so for example if we take uh, this picture and then we've got options uh, to put it in inch, centimeters, etc you choose your favorite here I was using centimeters it doesn't matter you can use inches so once you've chosen yours you go on to go on to next so this one was this picture was 40 by 50 centimeters that's the format I'm painting in normally or often sorry 50 by 70 centimeters so then of course you make sure it is in landscape you hit next this part lets you adjust it you can zoom in zoom out so make it bigger just take a part of the picture uh, you also can flip it which can be interesting sometimes uh, and then once you're happy with it, you click Next. And then you choose your grid. So there again, you've got options. Uh, I do not remember them all, but there is um, yeah different op grid options on it. And you can put as many lines as you wish. And there on the side, it gives you the exact measurement that you can transfer to your board or your canvas. But it's a very, very good tool. Very, um, very useful tool, that is. So we are going to start our uh, grid or some marks for the grid using a bit of my oxide brown and um, uh, yellow ochre adding a little bit of ultramarine blue just to darken it a bit and with that I'm, I'm going to decide not decide I'm going to uh, roughly trace my grid now I'm just putting some marks down so you you can you can do the whole grid you can use to put a cross in the middle I mean on the intersection some just put a cross on where the lines intersect well, I've just decided to put some rough uh, marks there just for me to have an idea where I'm going to put the features on the canvas 
there is there there are no many many features so it's straightforward and then with straight lines I am just uh, drawing out uh, my picture so I've mentioned this before but be careful when you draw out that's why a grid is often helpful because what happens is that we always uh, make our objects being a tree or a house or you name it a ball of hay always bigger than it actually is on the picture and I'm sure it happened to you before you were painting a tree it should have taken a certain space and you end up with a much much bigger tree than you um, than you intended to so be aware of that and being aware of that just paint it I mean draw it a little smaller or make sure that you are not going to go uh, over your lines uh, when you start painting and with that grid system it should not happen anyway because you can draw very accurately so we are not going to fuss about this uh, painting it's going to be straightforward and we have to remember that we don't want detail we just want rough brush strokes so there we put in what looks like a house or a barn it could be farm whatever we just outline roughly what we see so Edro Sigo is one of my favorite artists um, I quite like Constable 2 but I like um, Edward Siegel for many reasons he was a very very good artist I am fast forwarding this uh, part a little bit uh, you do not need to watch me uh, draw a picture I'm sure you're quite capable to do it uh, in your own accord and don't need me to show you uh, stroke by stroke all you have to do is roughly follow what is in the picture so to show you here I'm uh, trying to wipe out uh, my strokes here and you can see that they're quite embedded into the board here um, and this is because of um, the filler I put into my acrylic paint when I stained the board and that filler is soaking in the paint and really really staining the canvas so that the, the paint you are going to put on that will will be absorbed by this canvas uh, very very rapidly so this is good especially when you paint outdoors um, because you can put layer after layer without uh, to have to worry to be too slippery on you but sometimes when you put one two three coats of oil it can be very slippery it can be uh, very difficult to to paint or at least to to paint uh, in a way that you don't do mud so which another term would be gray out colors so I'm using a filbert now and uh, it will be important to wipe uh, the the paint that I used for the drawing 
only because, if you remember, there was some uh, yellow ochre in, and yellow ochre is an opaque color. And as we are going to paint the shadows, we do want only uh, transparent colors, uh, as transparent colors will give us that receding effect that we want in the tree. And so, therefore, we can't uh, contaminate these transparent colors with uh, opaque colors. So now I am blocking in the dark part of the paint, the shadow part and the dark part, uh, using ultramarine blue, uh, red oxide and yellow, uh, Indian yellow. So these are transparent colors and uh, they uh, have uh, that uh, beautiful um, power to recede in landscape. So here you can see very quickly I showed I used some uh, uh, burnt umber so that means I contaminated my uh, transparent colors so therefore I have to um, wipe it all off and start again or more carry on because luckily I found uh, out my mistake pretty soon but it just shows you that um, uh, doesn't matter how long you paint you always will make mistakes and sometimes like Bob Ross would say there are happy little accidents so here you see me put all the darks everywhere I can see them And because of the filler I put on the board, these darks will be dry by the time I'm uh, um, putting the second layer on. So now with the flat brush uh, number eight, I'm going to get um, the color ready for the sky. And we can see in the picture the sky is quite gray. So I will start with the white, adding some Naples yellow. You can use um, yellow ochre if you want at that stage and so I'll add ultramarine blue so here in the picture you see it's quite grey so I'll add a bit of oxide red which will grey down my colour there As you see, that combination works quite well to have a warm grey. Add a little bit of my magenta that will balance uh, the, um, the colour, the hue. Now it's a matter of filling it in. And being careful that we um, put interesting marks, interesting brush strokes or knife strokes okay, you're going to see in a little bit I'm getting big artillery out so we'll do some a little bit with the knife and then finish off with the um, brush so 
So there we are with our trusted knife. And now we have to um, get quite a bit of um, paint. Don't mix it all uh, that well to have only one dead color. So leave a little bit of everything in it. It will make the brush strokes more interesting. You have a bit of everything in the sky. The knife can make beautiful um, skies. It's also a good uh, uh, way to um, speed up the painting, especially that one, as we've got nothing really uh, going on in that sky. It's all plain blue. I'm trying to uh, change it a bit at the horizon to have a little bit of depth in. So I'm following the picture, but I, I, I'm not a slave of it, If, uh, as you are going to see. In a little while, if I decide I need to change something, well, then I will change it. If it improves, it's always good to change it. Don't stay a slave of your picture. Here we have a beautiful day today. I am in southwestern of France, in the famous uh, region of the Dordogne. So I can go right to the edge of the tree because uh, it is dry, as you can see. Nothing comes off here, it's, it's quite dry. So I can really come right to the edge of the tree without being concerned of putting the tree color into the sky. Which can be very good, for example, now as I'm painting a tree. Although sometimes we want uh, the edges blend in with the sky. I'll have to do it a different way and I'll show you in a little bit how. Um, but for instance, if I would have uh, loads of clouds, I would like my paint to be a bit less, less dry so I could blend the edges a bit better. In which case I would just add oil. But for this painting, it works pretty well. So we change it up a little bit now. Don't over mix it. So I did lighten it a little bit on the horizon, just adds a little bit depth. And now we are going to use our trusty uh, big brush, um, one and a half centimeter, so it will go much quicker now. And sometimes, or as I think often, we are too scared to get out the big brushes, but actually they are uh, giving us very interesting um, brush marks. So I'm after something a bit warmer towards the horizon.
So you can see what color I use. I don't have to um, uh, tell you every time what it is, but basically it's ultramarine blue, Naples yellow, um, titanium white, uh, and a little um, magenta. And if I want it grayer or warmer, I add a bit of um, brown oxide. So now in business, you can see how quickly <laughs> that sky is covered now, the big brush, loads of paint. Interesting colors are the little bit of pure ultramarine blue every so often. So to darken it a little bit here and to add some interesting brush strokes so there we are we're nearly done with the sky have a less um, have a last check to see if there is uh, enough interesting brush strokes in there I decide to add some blue gray I'll see I, I used too much um, uh, red there quinacridone red very powerful to be very careful how much you use. So next we are going to blur out the edges a little bit because as you can see here there is a straight edge. It's not only straight, it's dark so your eye will go there straight away and we want to, the eye to go on the left down there not up here in the tree so therefore we will uh, soften the edges and that's what i said earlier on we can do it uh, once if the sky is not quite dry we can just soften it in between uh, and here i have to add a little bit of my transparent color and then we just soften the edges so don't overload the brush just come back on to the edge and uh, just gently soften it out a little bit just wisp it out but right here you see that um, this hard edge we had earlier on has disappeared and uh, it's a much um, better now not attracting our eye so much to this point So we do that all around, wherever we see a um, strong edge, a hard edge. So 
It's much more natural now as well. And just carry on, go all around the train. We are now going to work a little bit on the trunk and the branches. For that I'm using the oxide brown and a bit of um, yellow ochre. A little bit of uh, the burned um, umber as well. We want something brown, greenish, brown. So, and then just emphasizing those um, trunks and branches a little bit. So we're only putting in the dark part right now be coming back a bit later just with a few highlights it stands out a little bit because I have added a little yellow ochre and uh, burnt umber therefore that color is not transparent anymore and that is why it stands out straight away so you see how transparent color recedes because the, the 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 foliage all around is in transparent color and we can see that effect that it goes back and then of course the brighter you go and the more opaque you go and um, more forward it will come to. I need a little more Indian yellow. And we are now going to uh, put a little bit of foliage on uh, top of that, I mean uh, brighter foliage on top of this tree just to uh, make it look a little less dull. But again, we are not going to overdo this. This is too dark, so I'm going to brighten it up a little bit, adding a bit of Indian, Indian yellow and a bit of uh, um, yellow ochre. That looks a little lighter. I think that should do. I don't want it too bright or too light, especially in the beginning. You can always go a little brighter later on if needed. So just a stroke here and there.
We follow what's in the picture. Stay a bit darker below. The tree is always a bit darker down below and a bit light on top. Adding a few browns. They actually are orange in the orange family. And uh, red orange being in. Uh, on the color wheel the opposite of green it is a nice complement and therefore will really help the green to stand out so make sure you've got plenty of browns in your trees so when I say browns I'm talking about um, burn sienna for instance here i uh, my mixture is a little um red um red oxide yes nearly forgot the name now a bit of red oxide and um a little uh yellow ochre Now going a little lighter, adding a bit of cadmium yellow medium. And just here and there are a few highlights. So now we just gently come underneath and just soften a little bit and um, coming, coming back a little later with uh, some transparent uh, dark colors and brown to um, help to turn the form a little bit. So here transparent oxide and you come back underneath that crown and um, just help to turn the form. Here and there. So adding a few more darks here and there, a few more browns, and even we can't see it uh, on the camera, it will pick it up. Once, once the painting dries, it will pick up all these uh, subtle shifts of colour, so a bit of um, orangey colour, greenish colour, blue colour, etc. Last bit of light. Just add some places.
So we are uh, going to put some um, sky holes in now. Uh, remember that they have to be a little darker than the sky around as it's surrounding of a dark mass it automatically would darken it so we have to darken uh, those holes a little bit and uh, the other thing is uh, make sure you don't repeat the patterns So if I put one here, I would put a small one next to it, one who goes maybe downwards, one will be um, like a little circle and so on and so on. But nothing too similar, especially together, they have to have different shapes. We also can do a negative painting, which means that we put a sky hole in a shape who lets appear maybe a trunk coming off or a piece of a branch or something coming off the tree. Don't forget to use your fingers, they're your best tools. Don't overdo it as well. So there's loads of small details that we have to remember as we paint. Um, and every single bit is important. So here I use the color of the sky again to round up the tops of the tree. So by doing this, as you can see, if the sky would still be wet, I'd use the, the sky and do it wet and wet. But as it dried, I'm just using it with a little bit of uh, those um, sky hole color and making it a bit grayer, bluer, and then just going over my tops around just to to make it flatter and to give that illusion of um, that form turning um, flatter tops So I decided to uh, leave pretty much the whole length of the video. There is a few uh, cats in it and uh, um, a few um, speed ups, but um, so you could see a little more of the work on this painting. I left uh, quite a bit. I hope this is okay with you and not too too long. I understand if you want to skip through through most of it. I could have sped it up a bit more, I suppose. 
I know I will please some and unplease others. So again here with a mixture of my transparent colors I'm going to indicate a couple of uh, branches a little highlight on it very subtle bit of a highlight on the trunk itself not much so now we're going to add a, a few darks add back a few darks here and there Okay, now it will be time to address the house on the left corner. For that, we are going to make ourselves a sort of a terracotta collar. So, a little of an, bit of an orange. So as you can see on the picture um, from the start, um, it is a jumble of um, strokes, brush strokes, dots, um, and everything together gives us what seems to be a few houses or a farm something like that but nothing is very defined and it's that sort of thing plus well the rest of the painting you will see there's no details just a few brush strokes so this these things would define it being impressionistic and um, which gives it some mystery because interpretation is left to the viewer who can make out what he wants as if we give him a perfect house or a perfect barn or perfect uh, crops it won't give him anywhere to go with his imagination and impressionism is about giving the viewer the chance to make this place his by seeing things which probably aren't, aren't there but to every viewer and this is maybe a not the best example but some impressionistic painting are, are really really uh, telling different stories uh, for each and every different person uh, as we could see and interpret the picture differently 
So in that I think it's it's really the magic of impressionism. You know, it's one of the reasons why I like that type of um, painting or style, I should say. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um, if we just go times two, you will still enjoy plenty of brush strokes, but you don't have to really go through all this. I'm adding a bit of uh, red sometimes to get um, a little bit of an orange and uh, a different tone in color. The walls. And there it is. One stroke there, one dot here. A little bit of contrast, bit of light, bit of dark. Chimneys on top of the roof. There we go. They're far away, so we don't see them quite so clearly. A few highlights on the roof itself. And there we are. We have something who looks like to me it's a bit of a farm down there bit of an angle that roof there we are okay quick wipe off the brush and let's carry on with uh, the fields in the front do you saw me I've just added a little bit of um, yellow uh, Naples yellow bit of yellow ochre just now mix in with a bit of greens so we just vary the color every time we uh, take a bit of color we just add a little bit of something mix it around try not to have the same color all the way through just make it a bit interesting those strokes keep horizontal we're on the mid-ground, so usually mid-ground stays quite horizontal unless I've got a post or something to, or a tree, where I have something vertically to paint, but grass or land stays pretty horizontal in the, in the middle of the painting and goes um, vertical as it comes towards you. And we generally do the same with the sky. We are painting vertically on top and going horizontally towards the middle of the painting. It just adds a little bit of uh, perspective of um, um, yes perspective. Or we could say a bit of depth, a bit of depth of field, that's it, that's the word, that's what it does. <laughs> okay, so please let me know if you enjoy this, I have a few uh, of you guys coming back to me, but not 
not many I don't know what to make of I don't know if you guys like these videos if uh, you want to see something different got not many comments and I would appreciate if you'd leave me a comment even if it's a uh, negative because maybe um, or I think I need to improve like everyone don't we all need to improve um, so if there is a suggestion something that you would like to see please leave a comment if you like it please say so say that yeah that's that's okay that's what you want to see more of it or not or whatever just leave us a little comment so for those who don't know me I'm been a painter for about 30 years um, I lived in England for about 15 years Um, what can I say? I had a couple of exhibitions there. Uh, South End, one near London. Um, yeah. And uh, yes, my time there was was very enjoyable. To start with, I worked in a school, not as an art teacher or painter, funnily enough, but as a catering manager. My background is has to do with food. Um, but I've always painted. I did an art school back in France when I was in my early 20s. So that followed me the rest of my life. And I've enjoyed it ever since. Painting is very therapeutic. It can really help with stress, um, but also with depression. So give it a go. Just on its own, it's very relaxing. So here, as you can see, I changed my green. It's a different field. So the crop is different different color and as we come forward we are going to change again well, as I said every time we go back to the palette we change a little bit the color mix one into the other adds add a little bit of yellow ochre add a little bit of uh, uh, cadmium Indian yellow etc just change it over every time go on to the palette but near near each other try to stay with the same value so for instance here if you squint although it's a different color it uh, if if you squint it disappears with the background color I've just put on because I've kept the same value so in other terms you can make something quite a bit vibrant by just changing the color but keeping the same value okay that's very important to keep the same value A 
by changing the color so by heating it up a little bit so the green in the back is quite acid and a bit cold and coming forward I change it up and I um, heat it up a little bit by adding some Indian yellow and some um, cadmium so we have the same value but by warming up the colors they seem to come forward so it's the same field as the one who turns to on, on the right side but is coming forward so by coming forward it gets warmer and this is what pushes it forward okay So here we're adding a few highlights onto it. Following the picture. Making it a little brighter still. So it will come forward a little more still. still keeping the same value. It seems a bit darker because it's um, so under the tree. Oh, when I say under the tree, I mean it goes through tree trunks and foliage so the color needs to change a little bit and here I'm going to put my lightest light so the eye will be drawn to this area So we just come back from a little break, 15 minutes break, which you have to take every so often. If you put a little uh, timer for every hour, maybe, or every half an hour, doesn't matter. Also, I haven't mentioned it, but um, you don't see me doing it. But every so often I'm stepping back just to see if everything is in tune. And if we on if we are on track, so after a while, when you stare at a painting, uh, you can't see uh, really what you're doing anymore. Everything seems the same. So here we go, coming forward still. Okay, they're warming up still because that's the um, the nearest to us, so it'd be the warmest, having some browns and yellows in them, but especially browns. So you can make grasses without drawing them just by pulling down some streaks you may have the um, and changing color every time as well um, having the uh, uh, illusion of being grass without painting loads of small streaks in it But the painting now starts to come together a little bit, as you can see. So we got some color pretty much everywhere now. 
So all is left to do now is give some uh, interesting brush strokes. Uh, also change the U here and there, change the color. So now I'm going to emphasize a few darks. So I go back into my uh, transparent colors, pretty much all the time using ultramarine blue, oxide red, and uh, Indian yellow. And uh, there on the picture, you can see some um, patches of dark that I haven't put at the start. So I put them in now and it gives me a chance to revise the whole picture and to have a look where there is more darks needed. Always remember there is no light without dark so you always have to put some darks in in order to show the light. simulate some sticks and um, grass just by a flick of the brush Also going to have to emphasize those two trunks. There is a two trunks coming up from a smaller tree. I can do the separation with some grass color. Give that tree a little bit more of a tilt. Emphasize a few darks in there can add a few blues down there if you want. Coming out of the tree, uh, blues can be very pretty and they actually have their place. If for instance down below where the grasses are, I've added a few blue touches in the shadows, that is. And I would take just ultramarine blue and add a touch of white So here I put a little lighter grass patch. It also comes round a little further. So you see, once you've put the shadows in, nothing stops you from getting the other volume as here the um, that patch of grass and push the shadows back a little bit again so you can paint into one or the other to have a more natural look so by getting a little brighter here it will really get the eye drawn down to this patch and not the tree as the tree is a big volume you naturally would be drawn to it but that's what not what we want we want the to see the presence of that tree but we need the viewer to go through it as well and to travel back into the picture few sky holes in the grass patch 
it's still called a sky hole even if it's grass or if it be a mountain you still call it a sky hole but notice how now I've brightened this uh, patch here how the eye can travel through I also in a little bit I'm going to open up a little path in that dark foliage under the tree as it's a little bit of an eye stopper there but here I'm adding still a bit light and that light with that dark contrast really is drawing the eye in subtle things like that is what makes a good composition as well and Edward Siegel surely knew how to make with simple brush strokes a beautiful composition for those who don't know Edward Siegel well he's born in March 1910 in Norwich and he died in 74 1974 by age of 63 in London but you can check it out you can check out his biography uh, on Wikipedia <coughs> he's also known for his uh, beautiful water uh, colors he did many 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 of those and he was um, Queen Elizabeth II favorite painter she bought a lot a lot of uh, his um, art he's painted uh, the portrait of um, George VI Elizabeth Bowes Lyon and the Princess Margaret as well so that's enough of um, Siegel I'll let you check it out check him out on, on Wikipedia very interesting so back to our painting again emphasizing a few darks but manipulating the edges at the same time I don't make the edges too strong, especially on the sides of the paintings. So now we're just adjusting the tree trunk there on the far right. trunks there's two of those we're also going to have to add far far trees uh, on top of the the houses and to the right there So adding a few interesting strokes just to uh, show the, some foliage in the front, changing the colors and then uh, roughing up the edges a little bit. So now there is time to add our trees in the far background there. Make sure they stay in a cool color. Make sure they recede well. And 
some trees on top of the houses there. So now we're putting in the finishing touches. Clean everything up. I'm adding a little bit, a few lighter strokes there and a few darker strokes. So we are going to add a few more reds, oranges, browns. Don't know what you call it, it's all the same family. To me anyway. Uh, so we add a few more of those in the tree just to add a little interest and uh, you will see how just a few strokes like that will make that tree a little bit more interesting. So here and there just add a little bit of that color. especially in the shadow parts. So here I explained that this helps, as I explained earlier on actually, the, the, the form to turn a bit. Also I say it again, but being a complement as a colour, a complementary colour, it sits well with the green. It just harmonises a lot. So you can put a few in the grasses as well, yeah. Everywhere you've got um, grasses, greens, adding a few reds like that to, to make it easier for the beginners. The, the good, a good colour to use for that is uh, burnt sienna as a complement if you don't want to mix your browns or your reds. And Sienna works very well. So now we need to travel through there. I'm going to have to open a little bit on the bottom of that tree, but you can see how this light here is. Um, really attracting our eye towards that bottom of the tree, left tree there, bottom left of the tree. So here I'm just creating a little passage for the eye to travel through because that dark mass was just stopping our eye there. We could see that there was something interesting going on in the back with that light drawing us into, but that dark shadow was just stopping us from traveling to going into that back and go towards those buildings. Now, as you can see, by opening up a little bit here, straight away 
you can go through and back towards the buildings. It doesn't have to be a big opening, just a little bit like this. So there we are. Much better, don't you think? So now we travel over there, yes. Very nice. So now we're just uh, adjusting the last few strokes. Flick here, flick there. Just make sure I get the last uh, straight edges gone as well. Soften them a little bit. So this demonstration is coming to an end. So if you like that sort of uh, painting, well, have a go. Go and check out Edward Siegel and just have a go. It is very fun to paint in this impressionistic style. So I certainly had fun to do it and it's linked to a bit bigger uh, painting that I did from this study uh, another Edward Siegel which is on the screen now and I really liked painting this too so just get one of your favorite painters study his art and it will only help you to understand and to become a better painter so thank you and uh, i'll see you soon in another tutorial enjoy your paintings and bye for now <laughs>